Hi everybody, it's Shari here and I'm going to be showing you how I made these cute little fairy jars that I made for CHA. Um, I think we were calling them ferrariums, like a terrarium. But um, I've already colored some pieces here from the fairy friends. I colored them with colored pencils. I stamped them out with a black licorice L'Enfant ink. Um, and then I also have some Gleeful Gardens. So I'm going to be using images from Fairy Friends, Gleeful Gardens. But I also think that the Gnome Sweet Gnome, the Gnome, and the Little Mushroom House would be great images for this kind of project. So I've got some mason jars here that I just bought at the craft store. These I like because they only have writing on one side and the other sides are smooth. So the writing's not going to mess with the view into the jar. And for this big jar, you want to make sure you get the wide mouth jar. And I've got some styrofoam balls here. Now this is going to be the base. Um, these actually fit into the jar pretty well, but we're going to have to trim them down. But you just need to get a ball that fits. And like this one, I've already used the top and I made one this size. So if you're going to trim it down, you just need to set the ball into, like this one, if I was going to use this big piece, set the ball into the jar and just trace around with a Sharpie. And so then you'll know where to cut your... Um, styrofoam down to. You need a little space around it because we're going to be covering it with moss. So for this one it actually fits into the top of this jar perfectly but I want to cut off and I'm just using just a kitchen knife here with a serrated edge. I'm going to cut off the bottom so it'll be flat on the lid because these are going to be upside down. And you could probably use a craft knife as well. Now I'm going to trim off around it because this ball barely fits into the lid. But what I need is some space so that my moss will have space to go. I want to cover the whole thing in this moss so that you don't see the styrofoam at all. So I'm just going to trim it down. And it does not have to be perfect because this is totally going to get covered up. But you can see how it fits in there now. I've trimmed the styrofoam down to fit inside all of my jars here. And so the next thing I'm going to do is put some hot glue on the flat part that I made. And I'm just going to glue that to the inside of the lid. So if your jar was sitting upright, this would be hanging from the top. And actually, if you find that the height is too high, you can easily pop these off and kind of shave some more of that styrofoam off, which I did. Now this is a moss that I just bought at Michael's. It's actual moss, but it's dried, so it's kind of messy. Um, this might be something, part of it, that you want to do outside if you can, but for the purposes of this video, I needed to stay at my desk. So you're going to see, like, dirt everywhere. Um, but it just is going to cover up the ball just like this. You can easily tear it to the size that you need. And if you have a hole, which you'll see here I will, it doesn't cover it perfect, it's easy to piece pieces in. So I've just put some hot glue on the top of the styrofoam ball here, and I'm just going to put the moss on top, give it some pressure to hold it down, and then I'm going to go around and tack down the sides with the hot glue. And a lot of this is going to be kind of squeezed into the jar, so it doesn't have to be perfect. But you do want to make sure you cover up that white ball, unless you're going for like a snow effect, I suppose. So here you can see I have like a space that's not going to get covered up. So I can just tear off a little piece that's left over and patch that right in. And because it's moss, you're not going to tell that it's been pieced together. <clears throat> you could probably use some other kind of um, material for this if you wanted to try maybe Easter grass or some of that flower soft stuff. I just don't have any of that stuff to, to try right now. So the key to this with these little pieces is basically toothpicks and wire. So I've pulled out a couple of little fairies that I think will work well together. I won't use all of these that I've pulled out because these jars, you don't want to crowd them too much. You still want to see all your little images in there. So I'm just going to put a little hot glue on the toothpick and then put the toothpick on the back of my image. Um, <clears throat> that's kind of going to get covered up by the other things I put behind it, but if you really wanted to hide the toothpick, you could use the dies and just cut out a white piece of cardstock and kind of sandwich the toothpick in between, but you really don't see them that much once you put the flowers and stuff in there, so it's totally up to you. Now for the little 
mushrooms, I need a shorter toothpick. So I just used some wire cutters and just broke it in half, which you could just do with scissors probably, or just break it in two, just so they're, they're a little shorter. And now for the wire, I'm going to use that to make the fairy that's sort of flying up above. Now this is just floral wire. I've got it in silver and gold. I do have some green. So you could use whatever wire. You could use a pretty color if you have some of that like kind of deco craft wire. This is pretty thin. A thicker wire might work a little better as far as putting it in the foam, which you'll see here in a little bit. But what I'm going to do is I'm straightening it out from the... Um, spool it was on and I'm just going to wrap it around a pencil and basically make a little coil just so it's a little sturdier and it's a little nicer to look at. So you can work with this once you've got it wrapped around the pencil and then we're going to just attach this to the back of the fairy with some hot glue as well. But for her, I'm going to put the hot glue on her rather than trying to put it on that really thin wire. And then I'm just going to lay the wire down into the glue to where it kind of covers it all up and seals it in there. So now I'm just going to arrange all my little pieces in here. So I'm putting the house kind of to the side. And then my little fairy that's standing, I'm just going to put her to the right side, but a little bit in front. And then I've just got some um, fake flowers that I just bought at the craft store. I'm going to kind of break these apart. I like these because they kind of stand up. They're like little sprays. They do good for going in the back to kind of make a background. Now you want to make sure that it's not too tall for your jar. These, as I cut them off, were going to be a little too tall. They were going to be you know, crushed against the top. So I'm cutting off some of the bottom. Now I did lose my stiff wire, so it's gonna be hard to stick it down in there. So I'm gonna add a toothpick to the bottom of my flowers as well. And if it's still too tall, you know, you can trim the toothpick down. So now it'll fit inside my jar the way I want it. I'm gonna do the same thing with the orange ones here. So it kind of gives a little backdrop to my uh, scene. Now this little red piece, these are a little kind of flatter and I pulled them off of the stems so there's a hole in them and I just put my toothpick in the hole that was already there. Uh, it's hard to push down in there so I'm using my um, needle nose pliers. Now this wire for the fairy like I said was really thin so it's just going to bend every time I push it. So I use my pliers to kind of push it in a little bit at a time really close to the base. And now I'm adding the little mushrooms. Adding a couple more flowers to fill it in and make it look nice and full. And then those little grassy greenery pieces that came off the flowers when they were too tall, you can use those as well. They look like grass and just stick those in the back. So now to put your creation into the jar, you just want to make sure everything gets tucked in there just carefully because they're kind of sticking out to the sides. Just push them in. Make sure everything gets tucked in so nothing gets bent. And it's going to be tight, but that's good because it's going to stay in place. So you just kind of want to gently push it in there with some pressure. Don't worry, that moss will kind of squish down. So you're not going to rip anything. But you want to push it down as far as it'll go. And then you'll see here that I have some moss that I need to pull off because it's keeping the lid from going all the way down. You do want to make sure the lid goes all the way down so that the ring fits around it. So once you've got it in there, and you also make sure that it's facing the side that doesn't have the writing on the jar. <laughs> Otherwise, you're going to have to pull it out and turn it. But there you go. There is the finished fairy jar. I think they're super, super cute and super fun. And there's lots of options on things you could put in these. And you can use jars that you've already used. The little one is actually a jelly jar. Thanks for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,